So after that exciting intro, we're going to dive right into this and unbox the Bursa Thunder 380cc, right? Nope. Wrong. Hawaii's got a two-week waiting period, and uh, if I had to suffer through it, you're going to suffer through it. And... Well, great news, folks. Looks like Hawaii's gun laws worked, and I've completely rethought my purchase, and I've decided not to purchase. Uh, yeah, right. Uh huh. There it is. All right, let's get at it. Now, repeat viewers will know that I did a review on the Bursa Thunder 380cc already, and that was my mother's. And I enjoyed it so much, and I really liked the look of the thing, that I decided I should get my own. And it's slimmer than my Glock 26, it's different caliber, doesn't have as much oomph. And I think we've discussed this all sufficiently at length in the other video, you can watch that one. So, let's just tear into this. Uh, space aged plastic construction comes in a hard-sided lockable case which I thought was nice and uh, you know that's at least as sturdy as some of the Plano ones I've seen out there so that should be sufficient for air travel if you want to take this long as your carry piece and you can see it comes with one flesh magazine A quick adjustment here so we can zoom out a little bit and I can keep the pistol in frame so you can check that out while we look at the other slim number of goodies that are included. Set this off to the side. And we got our obligatory paperwork, instruction manual, which multiple languages and not particularly informative although it does uh, they do have access to that information on the internet for more complete information so that's available and then we've got our NRA membership sign up uh, youth and gun safety act notice that's helpful and let's see warranty information and then other than that, we have the key. So let's crank it back in and we can talk about why this thing doesn't come with the standard bicycle lock. So we got the key here. It's a very tiny uh, five point socket set really. And you can see it goes right there and if you have it on F it's for fire and S is for safe so let's test the lock up on that now the pistol is currently on safe and the lock up is activated and I can not move the trigger at all normally if uh, it was on safe I'd get a dead trigger it would just be flappy and loose so as far as the safety feature works, I guess it's a winner, right? If that's what you want. Uh, I'll be turning it back to fire and storing this in the bottom of the box, never to be seen or spoken of again. Let's get that put back to fire before we forget. That'd be a heartbreak, right? Going out Sam's Choice hunting and uh, not be able to make the shot. You know how I feel about that. Uh, 
that completes the unboxing portion of our video so uh, next up the range report we went to the Cocoa Head shooting complex and I had some Winchester and these are uh, 95 grain flat nose easy tiger had some uh, PPU and these are uh, 94 grain round nose there we go and then we tested it with some hollow points so let's check our results we'll start with uh, a shooting video I'll pop off 10 rounds and you can check recoil and see what you think of that and then we'll go over the targets and we'll compare it to some classic favorites and we're off I didn't want to do too much camera work at the range because I know that makes some people uncomfortable and there were a lot of folks there. I don't want to ruin anybody's day or make them paranoid or uptight. So what you saw is what you get. Ten rounds and you could see the gun jumping around the hand a little bit and I was repositioning my hands but it's not like a, a Ruger LCP or any of the micro pistols that you feel like it's going to get away from you. I shot over 150 rounds and I didn't have any pistol related malfunctions. There's one magazine malfunction and we'll cover that at the end and uh, I've got a customer service story as well. So we'll see how that went. So what we have here is my initial warm up target and you can see for 25 yards for a tiny little pistol I am super happy with this. We got plenty in the bullseye and uh, this is when I was fresh and you can see I'm off the paper down below and there's a, another one up at the edge on top. I have no idea how many shots this was. I was just warming up and getting a feel for the trigger. So we can't really judge overall accuracy on that because we don't know how much left the paper. But I do have some other stuff that is hopefully more indicative of what kind of accuracy you can expect. And this is freehand, standing. I think the pistol's very capable of getting every shot on paper from that range and I was definitely the problem. Now these are from late in my shooting session. These are 10 inch targets that's kind of cut off on the top and you can see this is 9 out of 10. This was the PPU and as you can see I was hitting tighter earlier and I think I was turning into a bit of a baby and flinching and the one characteristic of the gun although it's not too bad to shoot it does get you right in the web and after the 150 shots, I was really starting to feel it. And I was disappointed with that group. I'm trying not to cherry pick here. I'm disappointed with my group earlier and tried to do another one. You can see I got some bulls there. And tried to really uh, bring it in and focus, but by this time, you know, this was towards the end of the session and I was feeling pretty worn out. So that's the PPU, the round nose got the Winchester here. Uh, point of aim and point of impact seem pretty consistent between different range ammos. And then finally we have our hollow points. Nicely on paper and for 25 yards and man oh man take it taking a look at these sights here. Some people 
complain about them. They are tiny, but to me the beauty of them is that either you're going to see that front sight and you're going to be on target or you're not going to see it. There's like no middle ground. There's hardly any light on either side and it's could dip below the horizon so easily. So, I don't know. If some people don't seem to care for them, but for me they work out. So let's take a break and look at some old footage from my Wisconsin vacation. We'll do some sandstone shooting quick and then we'll come back and see how this little pocket gun compares to a full-size 1911. So this was my opening salvo, as you'll remember, with the Bursa Thunder 380cc. And for comparison, this is eight shots with my grandfather's 1911. Now I feel like we're cherry picking because this is, you've got the one flyer at the very top of the target. You can see up here. So here's another target, and that may be a more honest representation. I don't know too much about shooting this one other than I noted that it was humid. So I might have been struggling with the glasses fogging up, but eh, again, not terrible groups. And for 25 yards, uh, I think we're seeing surprisingly good performance and a little burst of thunder. And we had 150 shots fired with no failures to eject, no failures to feed, and only the magazine acting up. So that'll conclude the range portion of the video. Let's move on to some possible accessories you might want to pick up for it, and a few ruminations. But before we do that, let's have one more look at some shooting from my vacation, where uh, we'll take on two aerosol cans and two apples. Accessories and ruminations. As you saw, this thing comes with one magazine, and that's about it. So my first move was to pick up a couple of spares, and it does take the Bursa of Thunder standard magazines. These are eight-shot ones. I know the regular Bursa of Thunder comes with sevens, and then that's going to bring me to my magazine problem. The second one that you see in the packaging, uh, 30 bucks a pop, and that seems to be about what they're going for online as well. And I don't think you're going to be able to see this on camera easily, but the slide stop hits on that shelf right there, and it immediately chipped off. So now, when you get to your last round, it holds open, but it doesn't actuate the slide stop lever. So when I pull this magazine out, it goes back into battery. So that's a big no. The guy who I buy from locally, I know it's a pain in the butt for him to ship it back and get it replaced. So I asked him and his recommendation was to talk to Eagle Imports. They're the guys that import in the Bursa Thunder series. And within five minutes, they had offered to replace the follower, and they're going to be sending me a new one out in the mail tomorrow. So problem solved, I guess. And so accessories, spare magazines, 30 bucks a crack for the eight rounders. And I also picked up a five pack of snap caps because I'm fond of dry firing the pistol and short of being able to take it to the range, uh, that's the best way to break it in is to work the trigger and work the slide and then I can practice uh, malfunction drills and 
we can't always be at the range so it gives you something to do to enjoy the pistol when you're not out shooting and finally I picked up a pocket protector from Galco this is about 20 bucks it's uh, suede it's got steel reinforced lips and uh, in the hook here and it's pretty rough it seems to catch in the pocket when you try and draw it uh, if it has a downside it seems to be a cat hair magnet and it's breaking in so far so good it's not a perfect fit it's not proprietary to this pistol but it does cover the entire trigger and you can get at the safety from inside I would like to say a few words about the finish on the pistol and this thing retails for like 275 to 310 depending on where you are and one of my co-workers has a superpower and that is that he has the dampest hands of anyone I've ever ran afoul of so if he handles something even you know in cool climates you're gonna have to attack that thing with a paper towel afterwards and I let him touch this thing and sure enough there was a patina in my cocking serrations so uh, it's not a great superpower and unfortunately that means that this thing's rust prevention is you know we've got Tenafron glocks I'm not sure what this is some sort of parkerized but you're gonna have to pay some attention to that on the slide at least the uh, lower is aluminum as near as I can tell and then finally when I first picked this thing up this uh, hammer drop safety was incredibly stiff and I was having trouble working it and I could see where someone with weaker hands would struggle with it as well and as you know I've covered handling the pistol with weaker hands in one of my previous videos here's another bonus tip for it if you're having a hard time activating the safety you can pull back on the hammer as you do it and that'll take the tension off and it slides into place really easy all right folks I think we did it we've covered this thing in depth we had our unboxing we had a range visit. I tried not to duplicate the material that I had done in previous videos. And we talked a little bit about accessories. So, thanks for joining me. And uh, we're going to put this thing away for a while. And I think our next series is parts considerations when building an AR. I've got a lot of exciting stuff coming in the mail. And for those of you who are struggling with all the choices of a first AR build, I think it should be fairly informative. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.